Hi guys, it's Elliot. Um, day before Halloween, and um, it's unfortunate that uh, this, this entry, this post, isn't going to be very happy. Um, I think I just really need to like, vent a little bit and talk about um, some of the things that um, I've been dealing with now that I feel really solid with myself and. Um, I think uh, it's going to be hard for me to explain it for a minute, but I think that um, being like on testosterone and um, in therapy and uh, just having like a really strong sense of self um, sort of like brings me to this place where I feel really um, strong in all of my principles and all of my convictions and um, I know what kind of people I want in my life um, I know what's healthy and what's not healthy I know how to pick up on codependency and addiction and um, just un untrustworthy people um, I used to go to Al-Anon meetings a lot when I was a little bit younger, um, and it wasn't because Al-Anon is for family members and friends of alcoholics and drug addicts, and um, I didn't go because I had people like that in my life. I mean, I encountered some, but I didn't have, you know, addicted parents or anything like that. Well, um, you know, I went with a, a friend, and then I realized that you could apply that um, that framework to everybody. And um, basically, the framework was that um, everybody in your life is is not safe until they prove to you that they are. And um, it's kind of like we don't really think of addiction as something that doesn't is not necessarily a substance it has to be in our minds like alcohol or some sort of drug but um, in my life I have encountered addiction to be everywhere in almost any form you could think of um, and the personality type that lends itself to um, being addicted to anything, whether it's love or sex or technology or masturbation or beer, drugs, um, I don't know, it's, it's common in a lot of places and, um, I found that when there's something that overtakes someone's life, um, I, I feel like the basis of of an addiction, unless it's like hereditary, um, it stems from some sort of trauma or um, some event that really impacted somebody and you don't know how to deal with it. Um, I think life now is full of distractions. Like most people I encounter are distracted in at least one or two ways. Um, most of them are distracted with many things. Um, and, and I'm not quite sure how to say what they're distracted from, except that um, I feel like there's a better life waiting for us when we stop lying about who we are and what we feel. Um, and so much of that is like based on what society expects and what other people do, you know? I mean, there's more tonight than going to a bar and drinking. You could make a tent in the living room with somebody, you know, um, go for a walk. You could make some mulled wine or hot apple cider. You could draw. You could make music. 
because you could stare at one another and laugh. You could do jumping jacks. I don't. I don't care. I mean, there's a million things to do, but the point is that I think people just take what's available to them and what they're used to and what other people do, and they follow along with it. And it's the same with social relationships. And not so much your your place of gathering, but I think I found that. Um, after so much growth that I feel like, um, very pure, I guess, like, very in touch with, um, this very honest, innocent part of me that really just wants to live life well and love people and give as much as I can, um, and the big thing about that, the giving part, is that I've had to be extremely careful with who I give things to because this ties in with um, the people I'm talking about or there's people that just can never have enough and it's because they're so distracted and they're just trying to feed that distraction they're never going to be satisfied and there's people that can never be enough and those people are also distracting themselves from that fact so, I don't want to be giving to people that, let's just say that are um, not really recognizing it or not benefiting from it. The worst thing that I think I could be for somebody in my life is an enabler. And um, lately I'm encountering a lot of circumstances where um, I've been so openly honest with people, and it's not comfortable for me, but I've had to sort of tell someone, like, you're lying to yourself, or you're full of shit, you know, um, because I care about them, and they won't keep up with the facade, and I guess the reason why I'm making this video now is because, um, I keep, I keep encountering this over and over again where I, I have to shut doors and end friendships um, at least temporarily because um, people people are I don't want to say not good enough but I, I do mean that I, I'll just explain how it's been safe um it's just, I guess, that I care so much about my forward progress that people that um, are going to bring lots of drama into my life, um, they don't serve me well, and I can't offer them anything because they're very blocked. Um, last night, I, I went out with a friend who um, I hardly ever hang out with, um, and uh, it seems like I'm the person that they call whenever they need a little bit of uh, a deeper connection or some philosophical conversation or something of substance and sustenance. And um, I've always been able to connect in that way and offer that. And it um, seems like when her life gets confusing, she's thinking about me. And I think of myself as a dose of reality. And this this scenario, I think that's what it was. And I went out with her, and there was a show, and the music was really great, and we were having a good time. Not really drunk, but having some beer. And um, her girlfriend comes, and I'm totally like fine with all of that, except for the fact that I know that this person isn't happy in the relationship because of the behavior of the girlfriend. And that behavior is not something I condone. Um, I wasn't really eager t to meet this person because of that, because I knew that I wouldn't put on a face and, you know, pretend like I thought everything was fine. She didn't really introduce me though. It was like she was hiding me 
from her. And um, I, I didn't care. I was enjoying the music. And, uh, um, I did, I did kind of judge the situation as being kind of ridiculous. Um, but anyway, then that went on, and she and I were going to go somewhere else afterwards, possibly. And all of a sudden, she's looking over her shoulder. She feels uncomfortable, and she's telling me she thinks she's going to leave. And um, I just, I thought it was all fine. I just had to speculate, like, how drastically she changed since her girlfriend walked in the door. And I had to ask her, like, how she was feeling, you know? And it was like she didn't want to recognize how she was feeling. She just kept trying to rationalize the fact that her girlfriend gets crazy when she drinks and she needs to probably take care of her. And, uh, and that made me sad because I think this girl's a lot better than that. I, uh... I, I didn't see her for a minute, and I, I was talking to someone that I hadn't seen in a while, and uh, <coughs> I walked outside, and I called her. I called her to tell her I was leaving, and her girlfriend comes out, and is saying something to her, and I was like, hi, I'm, I'm Elliot, and um, she shook my hand, she was like, that's nice. And she grabbed my hand so hard. Like, she just put so much anger into me. And then, you know, I had to say, like, um, you know, I, like, I, I call, I was just saying bye, you know. Like, there's no reason for that. And she actually said, you two have fun. And, and she touched my friend's head and, like, slammed her head down as she walked away and I don't like to be confrontational but I, I had to follow her and say wait a second, wait a second you don't even know what's going on you know, and she just kept walking away from me like she was running away and I was like, you shouldn't be touching her like that and she said she was going to kill me and I just let it go, but, um, eventually, like, you know, I just, wa I just went home, my friend was like, you should go, and I was like, alright, see ya, and walked away, and, um, and she called me to apologize, and was kind of just like, you know what, I'm done with that, because I can't even go out with you without being a part of your mess, and I'm really just upset that she's not taking care of herself, you know, but that's the thing, is like the hard emotions that you find when someone's in that situation, a lot of times you just want to help them. But I guess I, I just found that you're not helping them by helping them, you're making it worse. Because you're, you're, you're helping them validate why they're in that situation. And uh, I found that like just leaving it alone is better for me and better for other people. I just, yeah, that's what's going on with me right now. It's kind of got me bummed, you know. It's not, it's not fun to close doors on people. Anyway, I guess you have to do that sometimes in life. Yeah. I think it's one of the biggest lessons I've ever learned, actually. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> I guess that's all I have to say. I was so happy. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. All right, guys. Well, happy Halloween um, for those of you that celebrate. Um, I'll make another post pretty soon here because I'm gonna be up in the dosage. Take care, everyone. <laughs>